Hi, and welcome back to the Quilter's Candy Shop, where you will find sweet treats for the discerning quilter. We're so happy you're here. We are on week 10 of our Rainy Days Quilt Sew Along, and we're getting so close to it being done, we're down to the final details. Now we're down to the fun part, getting to lay out our blocks. The number one thing you need to get your layout done is some space. And that can be difficult sometimes. But here's some ideas. Some people use a large dining room table and you can do the top half and the bottom half separately. Some people do the floor. You can push back your furniture and that way you'll have room to move everything around. And when you stand up, you'll get a nice bird's eye view of your quilt and what it's going to look like. But my favorite is our bed because it's up off the floor. I don't have to bend over. I can walk all the way around it and I can lay out the whole quilt at one time. Let's go lay out some flowers. All right, we're starting with a clean slate. So I'm gonna start laying out the blocks. I'm first going to lay it out in the same format as the pattern and see what I end up with. Using my pattern as a guide, the first thing I do is get the top row and one side laid out that fits the bed or the floor or the table. I just randomly toss my blocks out and then all I have to do is fill in this section right here. Okay, I have to say, I'm not too unhappy with this layout, this being exactly the same as the cover of the pattern. But I do see a couple of things that bother me. I think there's just a little too much yellow all happening right here, and maybe a little too much red kind of right in here. So I think I'm going to try and spread that out just a little bit. So what I'm basically trying to do here is get all the different types of flowers spread out and all the different colors spread out. And it can happen, it just takes a little time and a little patience and a lot of moving of blocks. And then just stand back and take a look at it and see what it looks like and then move a few more. So one thing I am not worried about is the leaves. You could drive yourself crazy trying to get all the different colors of the leaves separated or the two leaf versus the four leaf versus the even leaf or the offset leaf. It's a lot. If you want to do that, that's fine. But in this case, I just left all the leaves as is. And there we are. I think that's my final layout. I used an old trick, which is the hopscotch on the diagonal. So I started out with this blue daisy, blue posy, blue daisy, blue posy, and then I came up here and finished out what I had. Posy, daisy, posy. 
And then I did the same thing with my yellows. This is my daffodil tulip, daffodil tulip. And I did the same with my clover, heart, clover. And you can't see it over here, but that's a heart. And that just left my poppies, which went here. And I have to say that technique almost always works best for me. You can go either diagonal as your base. It doesn't matter, but it just gives you a little bit more control to the randomness. Now that we have a layout, the four last pieces of sashing go right down here on these four pieces. And then we sew these rows together exactly as they are. When we get that done, I'll come right back. And the first row is done and it looks great. Just a reminder, when you sew your piece onto the other piece and you're using this sashing right here, when you press it, press your seams towards your sashing. So this one's already pressed this way and this one, when it sews on, then you're gonna press that seam allowance that way. When you put your cornerstones in here with your sashing across, then all of your seams will nest and that will make it much easier to get clean lines in your sashing. Well, I'm super excited I have this one done. On to the next one. There's lots of ways to pick up your blocks so that you have them stay in the right order. Some people flip these over and put a little pin and that is great. And some people just take and stack. You can work in columns or in rows, whatever works best for you. Just be consistent and do it for the entire quilt top. So I'm going to stack all mine like this and I will know this is the first one in the row and I will make pairs. So we'll just take this all the way to the sewing machine. And when I get to the sewing machine, I'm going to sew this one to this one. And then I know this one sews to this one and so on. Then I sew my three sets together and then I'm ready to bring them out. Cat, get down. And another row done. Fortunately, with this quilt, there are only four rows because our blocks are so long. So this makes for a fast layout. Okay, I'm about to lay down a third row, but I wanted to show you up close to make sure you're managing your seam allowances by sewing with your sashing down and make sure all your seam allowances are going the right way. Look at that. One more row to go. And here's the last row going down and everything looks so cute. I love this part because you get a real confirmation that you've got your colors in the right place or your flowers in the right place. So give yourself a pat on the back for getting this far. But the next step is our cross sashing. Now you can put these down randomly or you can set them up in order and take them and lie them out. You just wanna be careful. Maybe you don't want a yellow right next to this yellow because that is along that top edge. But if you don't care and it doesn't matter to you, just put them out randomly, it'll be adorable. Or you can take a stack of your very favorite print and use that as all the cornerstones and you'll have a nice little consistency against all the rest of the scrappiness. It'd be really, really cute. But I'm going to go for random scrappy, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. At this point, you're just going to lay out your cornerstones in the, cor in the corners, right on top of all the sashing pieces. Then you just make a pile and randomly put them out and see if you like them. Move them around till you get them where you want them, and then pick up one row at a time and add the sashing pieces. There's no need to take the time to lay out the sashing pieces like we did the blocks because its only job is to connect 
each cornerstone together. So that is the next step. Okay, so here I have my cornerstones placed. I'm pretty happy with it. And to be really honest, I went right back to my hopscotch diagonal. It seems to always work for me. So let's take, for example, my red row. So right here, you can't see down here, there's a little red, right here is a little red dot, red plaid, red dot, red plaid, red dot. So this is my favorite green print. So it's the same green print, but it comes all the way down at an angle. And then the blues, you can see there's a light blue, medium blue, dark blue, and then down here where you can't see it is another light blue. And the same with the yellows. Right here, right there is a naughty kitty. Naughty kitty. As I was saying, these yellows. There's a light yellow, dark yellow, light yellow. And I just find it always seems to work out that way. You mix and match but it still has some organization and it makes it easy so you don't go crazy. So now all I'm going to do, let's say this row, I'm gonna pick these up right in order and then I'm going to take my sashing and I'm going to attach it to the right side of every single one of these except this last one. Then I'm gonna sew it all together and lay it down in here. I'm actually gonna start at the top. When you're pressing your strips, Make sure that you are pressing your seam allowances out. That way, when you go to sew these onto your rows, your corner posts are now going to nest perfectly with your vertical sashing. Carefully ease in the sashing strip or the block to fit between the two corner posts. When you're done, press your seam allowance to the inside of the sashing strip, just like your vertical sashing. Each row is going to get a horizontal sashing strip with cornerstones across the top. When you get to the last row, you will need to make an additional sashing strip with cornerstones for the bottom of the last row. When you have all that sewn together, you can start sewing your rows together. Now, all I have left to do is I put these two rows together, put these two rows together, and then press that, and then I'll put this section and this section together with this center seam. And then we'll be on to the next step. Look at that, all together. Now the last step is to put on the borders, and then we will start getting it ready for the quilter. If you've been following along and you follow the pattern, you should already have your border strips pieced and ready to go. The strongest application is gonna to be to put your side borders on first, and then your top and bottom borders on second. To try to get our quilt as square as possible with the least amount of effort, we're gonna measure the right side, top to bottom, and you're going to measure the left side, top to bottom. If they're different, take an average, and that's the number you're going to cut your border piece to fit. Ease in the quilt top or ease in the border to make it fit so that both side borders are exactly the same length. After you've measured the length of your quilt, and you found the proper size, and you cut your border to the right length, now you're going to add it to the side of the quilt. To do that, we're going to fold the border strip in half to find the center. 
and put a pin right in that fold so you know where the center is. And you're going to do the same thing with the quilt. Fold it in half, matching up the corners here. And it should come out to the center of this cornerstone. This strip goes right through the middle. So this cornerstone right here should be in the center. We'll put a pin right there to mark that. All right, I flip this over. I line up my two pins. One of them marks the spot and pins it together and the other one comes out. And I'm just going to line this up with that corner and put a pin right in that seam allowance to hold it the right direction. And the same up here. And making sure all my edges are straight and put a pin in it. Now I take and put this pin with this pin and where this fold comes together, I stick another pin in there. And I don't do it right in the center of the block. I put it on one of these seam allowances that I'm going to want to have in the right place. And then I do that again over here. Depending on your skill and how long your border is, you may want to do this split, split in half, split in half a couple of times. I'm just going to do it this two times because I know I can sew from here to here and hold that straight. But if you are a little less experienced, you may want to fold this in half, match up the pins and then put another pin right here. All right. Now carefully, so you don't poke yourself, take your quilt to your sewing machine and sew the border on. Don't forget, put the flat border side down so you can manage your seam allowances across the top. And look, I got my side borders on and they look terrific. I want to caution you about a little cheater method that some beginner quilters use many times to put their borders on. It's very tempting to take and just lay your border on the edge, line it up at the top, sew it on, and then just cut it off at the bottom where it fits. The problem is that we are working with fabric, not wood and not steel. And so fabric stretches, we have all of these seam allowances that have give in them. And if you do that technique, you will end up with sides that are two different sizes. And that will make your quilt, instead of being square, it'll be trapezoid like that. And nobody wants that, especially when we're using the box corner technique which is going to give us a nice clean square corner up here. Now we just have to put our top and bottom border on. First measure across the top and across the bottom of your quilt. Add those two numbers together, divide by two, and that will give you the average size. So you're going to cut your border piece exactly the right size. The top and the bottom should be exactly the same. Okay, now we just have to put our top and bottom border on. We're going to do that using the same technique we did for the side. When that's done, we'll be ready to quilt it. Ta-da! Here it is, all finished, all the borders on, and I am absolutely in love with it. I really loved the pastel one when I made it, but these farmhouse country colors are so great and warm and inviting. I just love it. I hope you have loved yours as well. I think they're all going to be beautiful no matter what colors you use. I would love it if you would post a picture either on our Facebook page or in our cotton candy group 
or right here on YouTube, send us a little something so we can see your progress as you go or email it to me and I'll do a follow up to this video with everybody's pictures of their quilts. Fantastic. Now you have two bits of homework before you're actually done. The first bit of homework is to go around your entire border in a scant quarter inch closer to an eighth of an inch and stitch a space stitching line around your entire border. Not only does it help with keeping your seams together, it helps your edges from fraying past usability. And believe me, your long arm stitcher is going to love you for it. Your second bit of homework is to go vacuum your sewing room because working with the borders and all these small edges, I know you've got some straggling threads. Now, don't forget to join us next week. We are going to talk about preparing this beautiful quilt for a long arm quilter. You won't want to miss it. <music>